So in this screencast, I'm going to um, describe the method of integrating factors, uh, showing you how to use the method, and I'll go through one example. In a separate video, I'll talk about the idea where I describe this method as being kind of a backward product rule, uh, but I won't discuss that here. So the method of integrating factors can be used for equations of the form that I've got here, where I have some uh, function a of t multiplying the y prime and a b of t multiplying the y term. And on the right hand side, I have those the sum of those equal to g of t, an inhomogeneous term. So um, the first step in carrying out the method of integrating factors is to divide through by the a of t function. So if a of t is ever equal to zero, for some t, then the solution that we're going to write down may have some problems, but let's just assume it's at least non-zero initially, and so this, this, this method will work at least for a little while. So when we divide through, when we divide through by a of t, we get y prime plus b of t over a of t times y equal g of t over a of t. And once we have it in this form, we try to identify an antiderivative for this function. And so um, what we're going to do is use that antiderivative to define the integrating factor, f of t. This is a function that we're going to multiply the equation through by. And that function is going to be e to the antiderivative of b of t over a of t dt. Okay, so when, once we multiply through by that, we'll get e. Now I'm going to rewrite that a little bit more simply as uh, e to the h of t, where h of t is this antiderivative. So e to the h of t multiplied by y prime plus um, e to the h. Oops, e to the h of t. And now if h of t is the antiderivative of b of t over a of t, then b over a has to be h prime. That's what it means for h of t to be the antiderivative of b over a. And then that's multiplied by y, and that will be equal to e to the h of t times g of t over a of t. So that's what we get when we multiply through by the e to the h of t. And now this piece here is the result of a product rule. So if you want more uh, on that, you can check out that other video. But here I'm just going to write this down as a backward step through the product rule. This entire expression here on the left hand side is the same as the derivative of e to the h t times y. And on this side we get e to the h of t, g of t over a of t. And then I can take an antiderivative, e to the h of t, y is equal to the antiderivative of e to the h of t, g of t over a of t. And finally, I can write down my solution, y of t is equal to e to the minus h of t all multiplied by this antiderivative. Forgot a dt up there. Okay, so that is the formula that you could just write down, but I would not recommend ever just writing down that formula. I would recommend going through these steps in any particular example. So uh, let's look at an example then. Let's look at the example t y prime plus 2y equal 4t squared. So the first step, as I described um, previously, is to divide through by the coefficient on the y prime. So I divide through by a t, and I get y prime plus 2 over t y equal 4t. Okay, so this is in the form that we wanted in for the calculation of an integrating factor. And so let's first write down what h of t has to be. h of t is going to be the antiderivative of 2 over t, 
which is 2 natural log of absolute value of t. And I'm going to put in a plus c. In general, for the h of t function, that's not going to be critical. We can actually leave it out. But I want you to see that we can leave it out because um, it often comes up as a question, when can you add the c and when shouldn't you add the c? And here is just a convenience. Um, dropping it is just a convenience to save us some work. Um, so that's the h of t. From h of t, we calculate the integrating factor. So f of t is going to be e to the 2 natural log of absolute value of t plus c. Now there's some simplification that we can do here. First of all, when I have an exponential with a sum in the exponent, I can rewrite that as e to the 2 natural log of t plus, oops, not plus, multiplied by e to the c. And then I can put the 2 in the power. So I get e to the natural log of absolute value of t squared, which is just t squared, times e to the c, which when I take the exponential of the log of something, I just get back that something. So here I get e to the c, which is some constant, multiplied by t squared. So what we're supposed to do with this integrating factor is Oh, I should label that. So, so uh, this whole thing here is the integrating factor. That whole function f of t. Okay, so what are we going to do with it? We're going to multiply that through the, the equation. And so if I do that, I get an e to the c times, now be careful, we're multiplying it by this equation, which is the one with the one in front of the y prime, not the original equation. That's important because we're not going to get the right answer if we do it multiplying through the first one. So we get e to the c multiplied by t squared y prime plus e to the c 2t y equal e to the c well, I've got 4 in front of that, 4e to the c t cubed. So now you can see why it wasn't really all that critical for me to include this plus c, because it turned into an e to the c that got multiplied through by all the terms, and it's not going to matter. I don't need it there for the technique to work, so I can actually just cancel it out. And that's equivalent to just dropping the c in the first place. Now what we have left is t squared y prime plus 2ty equal 4t cubed. And if you go through the other video, which sort of explains the idea, you'll see that what I've cooked up is a perfect product rule result. So that means I can go backwards through the product rule and write this as t squared y all prime equal 4t cubed. And then I can take an antiderivative. I get t squared y equal antiderivative of 4t cubed is t to the 4. And now I have to put in a plus c. And this one is going to matter. And we'll see that as we go through the method why it sticks around or why it should stick, stick around. So now we can write down the, the general solution. And that's why I need that c in there. y of t is equal to t squared. That's t to the 4 divided by t squared plus c over t squared. And that is how you use the method of integrating factors to calculate the solution to a first order, a general first order linear ODE.